Okay, so in the last video, we talked about uh, DNA replication and also the process of transcription where you get mRNA, messenger RNA, from DNA, which is made in the nucleus, and then you send that messenger RNA to the cytoplasm, to the ribosomes, which then will make proteins, okay, which this process is called translation. So today, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about translation. So, but we run into a problem, right? We find that messenger RNA has four nitrogenous bases, and first, before we move any further, uh, I, put, I put this together before I started. Does anyone notice what is wrong with this? Okay. Hopefully you should recognize that, remember, RNA does not have thymine in it. Instead, it uses uracil, right? It uses U's instead of T's. So sorry about that. Okay, so mRNA has four nitrogenous bases. It's, made up of, it's a single strand of, of nucleotides with, made up of A's, U's, G's and C's, right? And proteins are long chains of amino acids. Uh, and remember, there's 20 different types of amino acids, and here they all are, okay? So the question is, how do we code for 20 different amino acids if we only have four nitrogenous bases, right? We don't have enough nitrogenous bases to, basic, to code for each amino acid, right? And the problem, we can't have... We can't have each nitrogenous base code for five different amino acids because once it got to the... Once it gets to the ribosomes, how would the ribosome know which amino acid, you know, A is coding for, right? If there's, if it could possibly be any of five, right? So we need to make tw at least 20 unique codes for, so that we can code for each amino acid, right? So the question is, how do we do that? Well, if you think about our language, right? Think about the English language. How many letters do we have in the English language? Well, we have 26 letters, right? But we have more than 26 words, right? We have more than 26 uh, meanings uh, that we can use in our language, right? And how do we do that? We make combinations of letters, right? So words, basically, I'm going to put them in quotation marks. I'm going to use it a bit. We talk about that. Are just combinations of letters. Right? And so if you make combinations of these letters, you can make multiple words, right? Okay, so that could be really important, all right? So we need at least 20 amino acids out of, we need at least 20 words, right, out of our four letters of our alphabet, out of our four nitrogenous bases. So how do we do that? Well, we make combinations. Okay, so what's the minimum number of letters we need for each word? Okay, so... So if we have, here's our letters, right, we have four letters, right, and if we have letters per word, right, so if we have to keep track of the number of letters per word, we want to find just the minimum, right? Okay, so how, how many words can we make? Okay, so if we have four letters per word, four, I'm sorry, if we have four letters in our alphabet and we only have one letter per word, we can make, well, let's see, we can make an A, we can make a G, we can make a T, we can make a U, right? So total, we could make four words, right? Okay, so not 20, right? Because remember, we want at least 20 words to make, to code for our 20 uh, different amino acids. Okay, so that's too, too few. All right, so if we had four letters, and we had two letters per word, how many words could we make? Okay, well, we could, remember, so each word is going to have two letters, so if we start out with A, right, we could have A, and it could start with, the second letter could be either A, or it could be G, or it could be T, or it could be U, right, or our first letter could be G, and it could, the second letter could be A, or G, or T, or U. Okay, so you could keep doing this. Oh my goodness. That should not be... Oh. Sorry guys, that should be a C. Wow. It's having issues. Right, okay, C's. I guess I like the letter T too much. Okay. Okay. Or it could be, sorry, it could start with a U. U-A, U-G, U, 
C or U. U. Sorry, that should be a U. There we go. Okay. So how many letters how many words can we make if we have two letters per word? We can make sixteen. Okay? Because if we have two letters per word, right? This and this, you just multiply the number of letters, right? Four times four. Okay? So if we have four letters and we have three letters per word, that would be four times four times four. Right? Because this letter, the first letter could be any of four letters, the second letter could be of any of four letters, and the third letter could be any of four letters. And if you want to actually write this out, you could, you know, have A, 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 G, A, A, C, A, A, U, right? So it's this times each of these four letters, right? Okay, so I'm not going to write all of them out. You can do this. Go ahead. I would suggest, you know, write them all out. Make sure that what I'm talking about, what I'm saying is correct, right? Okay, but so if, I'm not going to write them all out, but basically if we follow this rule, 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64. Okay, so we definitely have 20. In fact, we have more than 20. Okay, so if you have 64 possible words, we definitely have 20, but then what do all those extra words do? Well, what happens is each of these words could code for, well, each of these words can code for a separate protein, right? They code for a unique protein or amino acid, but you could have multiple uh, words code for the same amino acid. This is kind of like a synonym, right? So you know how certain there's multiple words that have the same meaning, synonym, sort of? Right? So we have this in this coding, okay? So we'll sh I'll show you an example of it, but before we move on, so we know we need at least three letters per word um, in order to code for 20 protein or for 20 amino acids, okay? And these words, I keep calling them words, but what, we, what they're called are codons. Okay, so codons or codon is the coding unit which codes for an amino acid. Okay, so if we were to take a look at a strand of RNA, we had a, a strand of mRNA. Let's. I'm just going to make up a strand. G. Say a a g. C U A. Okay. Let's just say this is mRNA. Okay, so then each of these three letters would be a different codon and would, right? And they'd each code for a unique amino acid, right? Okay, so if we take a look at these codons, we actually have charts for these. Okay, so here's an example. So this is a chart, basically. These are all the 20 different amino acids. Right, and these along the sides, you can figure out, okay, what codon, what series of, of three nucleotides or three nitrogenous bases would give you the amino acids. And you can see what I was talking about. So each combination, so U, 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 only codes for one amino acid, phenylalanine. But phenylalanine can be coded by both U, U, U and U, U, C, right? So two codons can code for the same amino acid, okay? So to read this, I'm sorry, I should have gone to this first. To read this, you look, just look at the first letter. The first letter is down this side, okay? Okay, so let's take, let's take a look at what our first codon was. Our first codon is U, U, G, okay? So our first, our first letter is U. Our second letter is across the top, so U, U. Okay, so it's going to be in this box here. And the third letter is over the side, so it's sometimes hard to read, but here's G. Okay, so our first codon, U, U, G, codes for leucine. Okay? So when it gets to the ribosome, these codons tell the ribosome what protein to make, right? Okay, so U, U, G equals leucine. 
Okay. What about A A G? Let me go back to our thing, our our chart. Here's our first letter A. Second letter was A. Okay. So here, follow this down. This could be in this box. Okay. A A G. G is right here. Okay. So A A G is lysine. Okay. Okay. And our second codon, C U A. Okay, so our second code, our last code on CUA, go back to our chart, here's C, first letter, second letter is U, oh, so already you don't even know, need to know what that last letter is because we know anything that starts with a C or U, any codon is going to code uh, again for leucine, okay, CUA again is leucine, okay, so this process is called translation. Remember, all right, it's going taking mRNA, right, it, the ribosome kind of reads this code, and based on each of the codons, it translate that, translates that into amino acids, right? So these are each amino acids, and now this is our protein sequence, right? Okay, so now we've gone from DNA to mRNA, right? proteins. Okay, and later in class we're going to talk more about, okay, so DNA codes for RNA, which codes for proteins. How do we get complex phenotypes out of these proteins? Right, proteins obviously are important. They're enzymes and structural proteins which tell our cells what to do. Um, it has different functions in our bodies. But how, do, how does this actually relate to much more complex phenotypes like uh, both physically and behaviorally? Okay, so hopefully that helped clear up some of the questions uh, left in lecture. And uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave comments.